means that kind of is worth the word. But now what happens? They doing their fast in different days and uh, they are eating grains. You heard of that one? Mm -hmm. They are eating cakes, grains. They are cooking 108 preparations and then eating them all. It happened in where Miami, when I was in Miami, East Con Temple, they did it. They eat grains. So, fasting dates, we calculate, they are exact, correct. No refutation anybody can break. So far they have not brought, now we are 30 years publishing every year calendar. Every year, since last 30 over years, we have calendar. We have calendar on your website. Website, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I always check. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. She's very good with the codicil. Yeah, you should be too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that she only has to purify her karma. What's about you? Look at us. What makes you less? You well, know, nothing. You, Nothing, yes, yeah, so got it do. Yeah. It's good for you. You purify your heart, purify your mind, purify your soul, and burn your karma. What yeah. could be better than this? Just fasting one day. And mm, medically, if you fast, then your juices inside the body, in, in digestive food, also gets burnt. Yeah. See? So, the body remains fit. I don't eat much anyhow. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Is that true? He doesn't yeah. eat a lot. No. He's very disciplined. Yes. But I do tell him when it's a codicy. Yeah. You know, so and do it that way. Yeah. Do, do it. So, uh, what did you say you eat on a codicy? No, no grains? Or no, no, no beans, no grains. No, no beans, no grains, right. right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, a lot of fruits, there are a lot of vegetables, there are a lot of milk products. There are a lot of nuts. Yeah. Mm, no problem. P potatoes. Yeah. yeah. You see, <clears throat> a person requires a lot of energy for his job. And it happened to be a card or fasting days, like a Janamastini or so. Then what he, he or she should do, take some nuts. Cashew nuts have a lot of protein, a lot of nut, more power potency. Mm -hmm. Cashew nuts and raisins. So the cashew nuts and raisins and potatoes have a lot of energy too, but not that much as this one. Mm -hmm. So they take milk for nuts like uh, buttermilk or yogurt or milk or cheese, uh, paneer, but not. If somebody is interested, in God, honestly, mm -hmm. will never avoid fasting on a council. Not possible. Mm -hmm. One who is health conscious will never avoid fasting. Even the wrong day he will fight his fast. Mm -hmm. Even the day not supposed to be fasted, he will fast. He or she. Because his body conscious. So Eating little, like Indians, some Indians come here and say, Why oh, we don't eat everyday meat? We only eat once in a blue moon. <laughs> I only drink one drop of poison, I don't drink one cup. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> so it's better. Yeah. Better. Better for you is good for you. The perfection brings you clear vision, clear head will be clear, the fog of or mist of impurity covering the brain to function properly it will be clear. Mm -hmm. Fasting on correct day. On correct day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We've been vegetarians for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. What and happens when they fast on the wrong ecodicy? Yeah, wrong ecodicy. Yeah, the wrong ecodicy. Like happened? I have been. <laughs> What's the result of it? <laughs> Well, the intention was good. No. Punishment is there. Punishment. Uh -huh. 
when somebody fasts on wrong day, there is a punishment. One is punished for that. Punished within this life and also in the next life. Punishment is obligatory. Mm -hmm. Spiritual life. Like say for instance, I put my finger in the socket and I get electrocuted. Even though it is a mistake, by mistake it went, my finger went inside. I did not want to put it, but by mistake it happened. So it is like that. So what about being, you know, misled, but the intention was good, but misled by mistake and made a mistake? Yes. Then person who mislead, misled, misled yeah. gets a reaction. If I tell you something wrong, mm -hmm. you don't get reaction. I get the reaction. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. Just like, say for instance, like Prabhupada was given ice cream. Ice cream yeah. And he was not told the word ice cream. He was told, Prabhupada is from our Gita Nagari. And he said, homemade, we made it. It's from our cows, Prabhupada. And then put it on his table, desk, coffee table. Prabhupada would sit in coffee table. Right? So put it there, pay obeisances and leave. And the secretary sits there. They already have planned. You know, we got to get this guy eat ice cream. So we, so we can eat ice cream. But, but ice cream was not used. And Prabhupada too. <laughs> yeah. So who is mistaken? Mm -hmm. So they get reaction. The misleaders get reaction. Sure guarantee. Nobody can stop that. Mm -hmm. Misleaders have to. Anybody who misled you surely has to be punished. They are punished now, which you don't know. They are doing everything bad in the behind you. Mm -hmm. And after death, they are waiting a great punishment. Untolerable punishment. How can anybody mislead an innocent who is interested to do something right? No, why can't why can't sannyasis eat ice cream? Ice cream is meant for householders. Okay. Because it in fact brings you infatuation. It arises you. Infatuation, compilation, desire for compilation. It arises inside. And this not supposed to do. So like that. Okay. I've seen the, I've seen a lot of sannyasis eat ice cream. I was in Italy. I went there maybe fifty times. Mm -hmm. Very nice people. One time my passport and papers were stolen there. Pickpocketed. So I got stuck. So with the devotees, I give lectures every day from this temple, that temple, this temple, this place, that place, almost. everywhere they take me, I give lectures. All right, fine. There ever happened to be a Sunday in Rome, Rome, Rome. Right. It happened Sunday and they made ice cream. And they brought ice cream to my room too. And I said, no, I will not eat ice cream. No, no, it is so hot, I will make no, I not eat ice cream. Then they asked next day why we did not eat ice cream in the lecture. So all these 50, 60 devotees are listening. So I explained why a sannyasi or swami or celibate should not eat ice cream. Mm -hmm. All right. So I got my passport back and I flew back. I came. Behind me goes Jay Dwayda Swami. You heard of that name? What's his name? His name is Jay Dwayda Swami. Yes, Jay Dwayda. Yeah, he's the man who brought the Bhagavad Gita manuscripts to in my room and I told him don't do that. And he did it anyway. So this guy goes after me to Italy. 
and they brought ice cream to him because one swami did not eat ice cream they wanted to know this swami eats ice cream so they brought ice cream so and they full krishna ram swami did not eat ice cream they told him that krishna ram he said we should not eat ice cream no no i will eat ice cream bring it he said like that to them when i go next time they tell me everything see he ate ice cream and what i told him that's what happened to him what i told what will happen to a swami if he eat ice cream and that happened to jaydev the swami at night he had a wet night did you catch me did you catch me yeah. in indian yeah. sir yeah. he had a wet night jaydev the swami and he goes in the mar no ice cream for me no ice cream for me you <laughs> <laughs> see a swami a devotee a sanyasi not supposed to be egotistic is supposed to investigate about what he heard mm-hmm. if you and me are of same rank and you had told something and i say because he is an american i don't want i'm an indian i don't want to hear that that is ignorance i am an american i don't want to hear that stupid indian what he says that is ignorance you supposed to investigate what he has said then analyze carefully if it is to be followed then follow how that is called real swami so what happened to him that stupid indian i don't follow give me ice cream i went there next year no in the, the, the italy they told me the motives and he had the wet night see mm. he eat ice cream <laughs> these guys <laughs> see this is funny for us but it's not funny for a swami is not funny is very bad yeah these guys they have all these things they don't tell you they keep you in ignorance they are misleading that's why i call iskon is a slaughter house of the soul they are slaughtering all these innocent souls there their faith is being slaughtered is con started by my guru was perfect one that's why i say if is con was like this as it is today mm-hmm. i would not have joined when my guru started is con there was a real thing a real gold real gold is stolen is gone what is there is looks golden only inside is all iron this is Well, so this guy don't eat ice cream you have ever, ever see jaydev the swami give him a bowl of ice cream and then you see the reaction all this has happened this is when was that has to be 1991 it happened but this is recent 1991 well if if uh is khan is uh you know slaughterhouse for souls um prabhupad set that up by initiating all of these these people that was a real so scene. where did he go wrong by initiating so many sannyasis after his departure is gone died it was after his departure huh? yes so the people that were left behind then th- there was a problem yes see when he left 1990 1978 there was a resolution they passed mm-hmm. that there should be byasa san for these gurus they appointed themselves as gurus and they said that there should be byasa san i told them no you are not qualified to be an byasa san mm-hmm. big seat don't make one guru sitting on a big seat you don't make one guru you can sit on the floor and be a guru too mm-hmm. so don't need vyasasan just be simple and nice proper let proper be in the center 
they sent me to Sri Lanka. They exiled me. Well, he is a big, big problem for us. He will start talking all this. They sent me vanished. Like Lord Rama was vanished for 14 years. He went to Sri Lanka. Same way I was sent to there. Prabhupada left this world. He's gone left this world. But it's the real is gone. It's just a shadow now. Mm -hmm. Not a real one. That's why I told I I would not join the way it is right now. That was 35, 40 years, 30 or high years ago at least. 30 over years anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So real is gone, died. Mm -hmm. When I left this call, they called me in to the GVC meeting in Mayapur. You see, once in a year, the meeting takes place in Mayapur. So every GVC goes there. Mm -hmm. So they called me in there. I went there. I said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I wrote a letter to, of resignation. I'm leaving. And Prabhupada is coming with me, I said. There were 35, 36 GVCs sitting there in the meeting, in the hall. So, Prabhupada is with me. Prabhupada came because I want everything as it is, mm -hmm. every unchanged. If this process is given to you in unchanged version, I'm just a transmitter. I'm just a teller, or I'm just a what do you call cashier. I'm as a cashier. Mm -hmm. So what you get is from that source. I'm just a transfer person, carrier. See? So if it is not as it is, then it's my interpretation. And I may be a bogus number one. So if I am a transmitter, transmitting you the thing as it is, then I'm not liable what you're getting. Postman brings you a letter. It's just like a postman. Guru is like a postman bringing you a letter. But it's original thing. You're getting postman has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. That is called real guru. It's just uh, delivering a message. Yeah. Iskon is no more Iskon. The way it was founded. Books are not as it is because his tapes are destroyed. And they're contradicting to the reader, whoever is Indian, knows the philosophy. There are some Indians in ISKCON too. They don't know the philosophy in India. So one who knows these books are no good. And there is no proof to match it up. Original things are destroyed. Mm -hmm. I sat when I went to Mayapur. I went, uh, took a little trip to Navadvi, mm -hmm. and when I was coming back, <clears throat> there was this little temple there, and uh, I went in the temple, and it was, uh, uh, I guess a guru, what was his name, do you remember his name? Yeah. But he was a god brother of Shapupad's, mm -hmm. and he had his own little temple there. When was that? Yeah, when did I go, five years ago, four years ago? Oh. There are no Prabhupada's God brother in life, anybody, no zero. They are all well, gone. That's um, maybe about seven years ago. Maybe yes. He was old. Yes. He was an old, old, old. They are all gone. Yeah. They are all gone. There are none left since last 34, 35 years. Was, was he a God brother or a disciple? I thought he was a god brother. Well, he, 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 he had a temple right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. by the place. Many temples. Very, and he was, you know, by himself. He was very, and he knew about ISKCON, but he said he didn't have anything to do with it. And I just thought it was kind of funny. But I sat in on the, that GBC meeting when I was in Mayapur. No, nobody can go unless they call you. 
GBC meeting, no one can go. Well, well it was it, it was, was a meeting Darshan. of all the temple presidents. All the oh. temple presidents. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. do you know Rajendra Nandana? He was temple president in Hawaii for a while, mm -hmm. and then he went to San Diego, mm -hmm. and he's not temple president anymore. But he lived up in our area, which is uh, Grass Valley, Nevada City, which is, um, that's where we met him. And then he moved. But he, we, he invited my right. husband. Temple president meeting. And Temple invited. president meeting, yeah. GBC yeah. meeting, only if they call you, nobody no, can go. No, it wasn't you, it was the temple president. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I sat in on it, was, it was kind of, it, it, well, when I listened to it, I listened to the talk. I just listened and listened to them talk and about this temple and that temple and the money and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I came to be a little skeptical after hearing that conversation. It's only because it was more of an emphasis on money. So it seemed to depart from the teachings of the scriptures to me. And that's, that's the only reason why I just said, well, I just stay back a little bit. Just listen. You know, I go to Kirtan, go to listen, but uh, it was more my instincts, I think. We should be more conscious of improving our soul. That's what I thought. Yeah. Instead of seeking or hoping or wishing or desiring the facilities to facilitate our body and mind. Mm -hmm. So to facilitate body and mind is not going to help my soul. If I'm interested to improve my soul, and my soul is improved, then it will facilitate for the body and for the mind and for intellect. Mm -hmm. Everything. So we must concentrate on that one time. I came from Philippines and landed, my plane was landed in Los Angeles. I have this contact many years ago. There was a philosophy in Islam. Little Maya and big Krishna is perfect. So I did not understand because of my background is different. It needs a little more explanation because terms or idioms of this part of the world is different than idioms and terms in India. Right. So my training is there. So little Maya and Big Krishna is okay. So I was wondering what it was because I arrived at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, this I heard and I'm sure next day I have to give lecture. So <coughs> I asked what it is. Oh, you know, once in a while going to cinema house and you know, going with girl, moving around a little bit, you know, on the beach and is okay, just chant your 16 ranks, come to Mangalarti, go collections, read up and all that, do that, do that. Once in a while, fooling around is okay. That is for little Maya. And doing 16 rounds and reading Bhagavatam and being in the temple and doing all that is also very good. You know, big Krishna. So that is the wrong notion. That is knowingly committing mistake. You know what is wrong and you do it. Mm -hmm. Is it not wrong? Policeman breaks in the door, then uh, but somebody who don't know he's hungry and he found food is sitting there and can see through the glass and he broke the glass and took the food and don't want to steal anything else. He can be slapped or police will come and smack him a one or two and let him go because he did not steal nothing else or I did not want anything. I saw food here sitting. I did not know if I break in for just for food and somebody will take me to jail. Mm -hmm. Did you catch me? Mm -hmm. So there is something else than policeman coming and stealing everything and going away because I'm policeman. It's not correct. Mm -hmm. So 
one should not twist around the philosophy and spiritual life as per the desire and requirement. Mm -hmm. What will make me soothe? I just twist the philosophy like that. It's not good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was 1984 in Miami. I was there and happened to be Janmashtami. You heard of Janmashtami? Mm -hmm. Krishna's birthday. And there was a big festival. All the devotees living outside as karmis, they also came about fringes, you call it fringes, I forgot what word they used. And uh, they all came over there. I gave a lecture and there was a Hridayananda. Hridayananda, you heard of that? Hridayananda? Yeah, yes, yeah. he came to our house. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't very patient with children. Uh -huh. <laughs> Made <laughs> mothers leave. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. So he was there. I was there. I fasted. There was a feast. Cakes. For the cut birthday cake for Krishna. There were puris and there's all these grains they're eating. They're having feast. So I wondered what happened. Because I never passed a Janmashtami outside my area. There was the first Janmashtami I passed outside my area was in Iskon, Miami. And it was Hridayananda. Above my room was Hridayananda's room. So I wondered what happened. My guru started the mastami with a potato and lemon juice and a piece of sweet. My guru said, you eat day before and the day after. You don't eat on that day. One night, two nights, and one whole day, you should not eat. I wondered, is this proper? If you are a guru, you are a GVC, you are supposed to direct your disciple as a guru, and you are supposed to direct the whole society as a GVC. Whole society, you are responsible for the whole society as ISKCON because you are a GVC. You are supposed to be pulling riksha if you do it like that. But you, what I have seen with my own eyes, this happened when I am in the temple. Mm -hmm. They did not come and ask me what they should do. <clears throat> when I asked what are they doing, they are cutting cake, come down. I never went. You cannot cut cake for Krishna. Krishna is not a material person. For a material person, you cut cake. Mm -hmm. Because we are mortals, we take birth in this world. Krishna is immortal. He don't take birth. He appears. For him, there is no cake. Nobody follow. If this was a real con in which I joined, it would not be like this. It happened. So you wouldn't offer it to Krishna? You would, they would cut the cake and offer it to Krishna? You wouldn't they offered, but yeah. they should not eat. But they should not eat. Yes. Right? Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All grains or puris and rice and sweet rice and what they are, they are all having feast. Right? So at 5 o'clock in the evening or 6 o'clock, just sun is setting. Yeah. Because they, then later on I found out that geologically they are deciding what time is the fasting ends. Yeah. Sun is not yet set. Yeah. Your fasting ends. <laughs> is it when when the moon comes out or the? Because I've been to some uh, programs for John Moss to me, and it's after midnight that a lot of the devotees eat. Yes. Not supposed to eat. Some start earlier. After midnight, uh -huh. you're supposed midnight to eat on. only potatoes and lemon juice and a piece of sweet, mm -hmm. milk sweet. Um, that happened when Prabhupada was there. Yeah. Whenever Prabhupada came to Vrindavan, mm -hmm. there were at least hundred devotees came with him. So they all know. 
what was the standard Prabhupada established. Those are the ones that took over ISKCON? Kind of yes. Yeah. And they know. Say, for instance, I wrote a guru book. You heard of that one? Mm -hmm. Guru Nirnaya Deepika. Scripturally, who should be guru? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who should be guru, who should not be guru. Right. All the GVCs have it. They bought it. I never get free. All the Tamil presidents have it. All of them. And many ISKCON devotees have bought it. Who is following it? Lord Krishna speaks who should be Guru. Lord Brahma speaks who should be Guru. Lord Shiva speaks who should be Guru. Narad Muni, he speaks who should be Guru. All the authorities written in Bhagavatam, their names, they all speak who should be Guru. All the Goswamis, they speak to be Guru. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks who should be Guru. We are devotees, we are supposed to follow them all. If I think I am on the right path, I am wrong mm -hmm. on spiritual way. Materially may be right because you follow your, what you call that, guide speaks your, with turn right after 100 million GPS. 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 You follow GPS or you follow map and uh, you come here. Mm -hmm. That is maybe right. So you follow GPS. GPS is the scriptures. <laughs> if I think I will go to your house as per my desire, my my ways, then I cannot reach. I have to follow your guidelines or the map. Then only I can reach. Similarly, if I think my speculative way is correct, way is not correct. What scripture dictates, that is correct process. That is the real way to go. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a little confusing to navigate when you have so many voices in the, in the eye or ISKCON or when she goes to, you know, Kirtan or something like that. There's a lot of chatter, a lot of different ideas and philosophies. And that's where you get lost, I think. But your intuitive ability may tell you sometimes that something's wrong. If you're determined, nobody can misguide you. Yeah. Well, that's probably true. Yeah. You have to be determined. Yeah. Hridayanand became very angry when I said, no, I will not go to this big cutting. I will not eat what they are cooking. I won't eat. I ate next day. I won't eat whenever they want. They want me. No, I will not do that. So if you are determined, there are 200 devotees, nobody can brainwash you. Determined. I will not watch cinema. I will not watch movie. Even though in front of me there is a TV. I will not watch. Mm -hmm. I die and not watch. I will not do that. If I go to Guru, yes, Swamiji, here is your donation, and I watch TV and the movie, I'm cheating my Guru. God will never forgive me. See, how much reality is required. Mm -hmm. I don't care who becomes good, angry on me. I didn't care who that has become angry. I didn't care. I cared about my spiritual life. I didn't join my Guru for Hridayananda. I joined my Guru to go to God. I serve Him. Did He catch me? While serving Him, if I end up serving you, if serving you don't become serving you, become serving Him. Because I made cooking, I cooked food and offered to Him, and for Him I cooked. But you ended up eating. Did He catch me? While I serve, I am not serving you, I am serving God, my Guru. Right, right. That is the procedure we are in. This procedure. Mm -hmm. Sadhu means his goal of existence is to help others. Mm -hmm. Only he lives in this planet to help others. 
he don't help himself because while helping others he is also helped so he is one of the others the word others he is also included mm -hmm. right. if there are 100 people and cook for 100 people i am one of the 100 people too why i have to cook for me cook for God and all hundred people eat. I'm included. Yeah, good. Right. That is sadhu. Mm -hmm. Sadhu lives for others' benefit. Mm -hmm. See, that is called devotee. Real devotee. Mm -hmm. Dr. Prabhupada, and you see Prabhupada's tapes, that is called sadhu. That is the way sadhu is supposed to be. That is the real way. That is that is our training from birth. That is our generation. That is the way to do things. Mm -hmm. That's probably when Prabhupada cooked dinner when he first came to America. Mm -hmm. He cooked for everybody. I remember seeing those pictures of him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He taught. That is called Acharya. Acharya means teaching by example. He taught how to cook, how to clean, how to be devotee, how to behave, how to think, how to read, how to type, everything he taught. Mm -hmm. That is called Acharya. By personal example he teaches. If I am not a good example to anyone, how can anybody learn anything? Say for instance, <clears throat> four years ago I am going to India. So my plane from Washington landed in London. We have to change planes. So four hours waiting. So I waited. Indra Dimna Swami walks in. He's also going to India. You heard of Indra Dimna? Mm -hmm. yes, it goes to those, May has those Polish, has those big festivals in yeah. Poland. Yes. So he comes in. And he also is going to India. Same plane. He looked at me, did not talk, say about nothing. All right. Because he had first class ticket. I'm normal class. I don't want to waste money. Krishna's money. So he was first class, so he went. Straight. We were in the plane, going to India, seven, eight hours. So when the food was being served, I don't eat nobody's food. I pack my food, is finished, I will fast. So I stood up and walked. Because everybody is eating, so I walk. From this end to that end, I look. Hilda Dibna Swami is having a big plate eating. And all his people, I did not know they were his devotees, they are all talking to each other, laughing. Four or five of them eating. It's not a deceit. person who cooked that food in the plane might have chopped with the same knife a goat or a cow meat or something else. Mm -hmm. Food cooked in the aeroplane cannot be cooked without onion and garlic. Food cooked in the aeroplane cannot be cooked without vinegar. Food cooked in the aeroplane person may be scratching here or scratching there mm -hmm. and cooking. Person or food cooked in the aeroplane is not cooked by the devotee. And he may be a meat eater who is cooking, that is 99.9% .9 sure. Mm -hmm. Person who is serving is not cleaning his or her hands after evacuating and urinating. He is not cleaning hands with soap and mud or what not is required for cleaning. They don't live in this way, a swami, a guru, a devotee. Is a... I see, I saw, I went talking. I want to know what guru is doing. Why I want to go there? Because someday some of his followers came to me, what should I say? This happened only a few years ago. I saw him in the airport in Delhi. Because where the luggage is there, first class, second class, third class, everybody comes in one belt. So I saw Harimal Maharaj. 
we have to, because we know each other. And Bajahari, we know each other. He is one of the, my god brother, he is wearing normal dress, you know, so I did not recognize him, now he is wearing saffron. So, I am talking. He did not want to talk. Because when I went to see what he is doing to the plane, he saw me. Oh. <laughs> see? Right. He did not want to talk. He sat down on the dirty floor and opened up his bag and looking at the handbag. Handbag, shoulder bag, and looking at the handbag. <coughs> Sitting on the truck, where you get luggage from the belt. You don't sit there, in the center there, near the carts, you know where the carts are. You don't sit down there. He sat down there and don't want to talk. We are talking about Ari and me, we are talking, but uh, then I stopped him talking because I got my luggage, I got the pickup. So he said, Maharaj, Maharaj, please come to our place, the Redstone Temple. So only 100 yards away from his temple. Wherever you are going, from there is only 100 yards, 100 meters away from my place, your place, please come to our place. Now, is that easy thing? If I tell you I will take you to God and I don't go to God, if I eat dirty food, if I eat, eat, take dirty service, I'm going to be dirty. So if I'm dirty, how can I clean you? It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. So we have to be very careful. So very careful. Then we will pass our exam. Our exam is waiting. The death is our exam. We will pass if we are careful. No, I, I'm, I'm, I agree. I agree. It's no cheap process. But so so come. Very pleasing. Clock is in front of my eyes, and I sit down there. I forget what time it is. Mm -hmm. Clock is exactly in front of me because it's my for present. When you type, you forget. Looking there is a clock in the screen too in the computer. Yeah. You forget. You don't know. Yeah. That is called devotional life. Mm -hmm. You don't know how life passes. How days pass. Nidra ahar bihar ka divijito chatyanta dino jayo. 24 hours a day, you are in service of God. Your sleep becomes a service, it's not rest. It becomes a service. Just you're resting so you can do more service. You're eating, but it's not called eating. Because you are eating just to you can do more service, so it's not called eating. What, what's the best service you can give by example of how you live your own life? As a, as a devotee, as a devotee. Be simple and think hard. Yeah. Only for your soul. So like plain living, high thinking. Yes. Yeah. Get up in the morning. And clean up yourself if you have time, chant a few rounds and take something pure and go to your work. Mm -hmm. Come back, take your bath, chant some japa, take your meal, and maybe watch TV news, you must know what is happening in the world. And read a few pages while resting. That's what my devotees do. They chant their japa. Mm -hmm. Get up in the morning, chant japa. Get bath, chant japa. And then pack up their room. Now come back, take a shower, or clean up, chant japa. Whatever remains or not remains, then no, no problem. And then read and take rest, take good food, prasadam. Does, does, a, does a devotee have an obligation to go out and preach? If he or she is 
qualified. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I you thought. must know qualified. what you, if somebody asks a doubt, you must know how to answer. Yeah. Right. See, when I went, I think it was 1981, in Berkeley, and there was something called KRSNA. You what heard of that? KRSNA. You heard of that one? No. Well, they are called KRSNA. So I also did not know. So they, one day I want to know quietly. One day they asked me, if I should also go. It's called Marathon. Christmas Marathon. It's called Christmas Marathon. Everybody's going in the morning and coming at night. So I was, I was taken to. I went. So I want to know what is KRSN. <laughs> so those days, LP, long play records, so round, round things like, you know, yeah. so like discs. So they, they bought this carny rock and roll, hard rock on country rock or what not rock. And they have thousands of LPs in their bands hundreds of thousands of LPs and they just go out care and so I said one side and they said they call hello 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 hey uh, hi hi uh, do you live around here mm, so say she say yes yes uh, oh yeah anyway um you heard of ham radio I said no ham radio <laughs> so no so I, I'm giving out this ham radio they get feeding thousands of children in India hungry people and you know Give something. Oh, okay, I can help you out. So, do you like hard country music or hard rock? They give you LP. All right, this is called KRSNA. And then they give you ten dollars. Okay. I don't have change. I have go, we ask only two two dollars. So we we'll give you ten dollar bill. So can I have another? I got too many one dollar bills. <laughs> they show you two, maybe twenty thirty dollar bills. I got too many dollar bills. Can you get me me another one? gave you second one the talking 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 forgot he gave two or three or uh, then he gave him two or three dollars back and boom drive off got thirty dollars for two dollars he looted thirty dollars did he catch me what i speak did you catch me i am there in the jeep in the van i know what is happening so ten dollars or twenty dollar bills he got two or three of them and only returned two, three dollars or one dollar bills right. and boom ran away and he started to carry on shouting that, la that, that that man who came out from the store or somewhere and that man was shouting hey 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 we are already gone so that is called KRSNA that is called preaching is not correct it's not preaching that is not preaching that is called looting it was in Rishikesh. You heard of the name Rishikesh? Yeah. It was in Rishikesh. I went to Rishikesh and it was a very rich man. And that Rishikesh, we went to make him a member. <coughs> of our, so because GVC assigned me in 1980 to open a center in Rishikesh. So I went there and took few years and opened a center and started with our temple. <coughs> Where is this rich man went to Chicago? came to Chicago here and there was a book distribution in the airport those days we were licensed to distribute books on the airports right. so there was Tripurari he became a Swami you heard of them Tripurari Swami he changed him up Indian man those days Indian government did not allow more than three hundred dollars for an Indian to leave India and this man was looted for two hundred dollars mm -hmm. for one book. He was very mad. He was not happy. He told me that. He's still alive. <clears throat> that is not called preaching. Preaching means convincing. You convince somebody about their improvement. How would you improve? If I tell you and, and it makes sense to you and if you accept it, you are improved. If you don't accept, I can't do, I cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. But that is called preaching. 
And how will I convince anyone unless I know something? So, unless you know something, you don't go out preaching. Because if in the name of preaching we are looting people, looting is not allowed in spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Deceiving, misleading is not allowed in spiritual life. Fakeness is not allowed in spiritual life. Cheating and bluffing is not allowed in spiritual life. Show, show, show is not allowed. Mm -hmm. You have to be real. What you are inside, you have to be outside. Diplomacy is not allowed. Say something and do something else is not allowed. Mm -hmm. It's spiritual life. Then you are able to preach. Krishna Kripa Bina Nahi Tara Pravartan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that. You must be blessed to preach. So even if you have practiced spiritual life just for one year or six months, mm -hmm. and you are blessed, you are able to talk. You can talk anywhere you go. So they say, Pujyati Raja, Vidwan Sarvatra Pujyati. King, leader of the nation is worshipped or respected only in his nation. Outside the nation, only learned people are accepted. Mm -hmm. If you are learned, oh yeah, you know such and such came from California, very learned. You will tell you. You go to India, you will tell you. Wow, you go to Africa, you wow, this guy is very learned. Very talks very well. But because I am a king of such and such country and I, I need respect from other place, unless I am officially invited, I will not be respected. Did he catch me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Officially invited, then you have respect, salutes. But you're not officially invited and you're a king of a nation, you go to some other country, they don't care about you, you're another one. Right, right. That makes sense. Now, someone wanted to go to your temple in uh, Vrindavan, where would they stay? Would they find a Motel? No, we have ashram. You have ashram. Ashram, very nice rooms are there. Uh -huh. And uh, good facility, prashadam is there, artis are there, kirtans are there, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. okay. Very secure place. The devotees go there, we have ashram. Mm -hmm. okay. Ashram is adjacent to the temple. It means temple and then ashram, adjacent. Nice place. And it's only 65 kilometers from Taj Mahal. You heard of Taj, Mahal? Taj Mahal? Really? Yes, 65 kilometers means 50 miles. Only really? 50 miles. Huh. I've never been to Taj Mahal. Well, then you're there. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Taj Mahal, you can see Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill is there. You see Radharani's lake is there. You see Yamuna is there. Vrindavan is there. You know, you can. Right around his palace. Yeah. What's, what, uh, what city do you fly into? <coughs> Delhi. To Delhi. And how far from Delhi is it? We say about 110 kilometers. Like so. About 70 miles. How do you get from Delhi to. A taxi. A taxi? Mm -hmm. So just like the ones at Mayapur that come yes, and pick you up at the airport? Yeah. Yeah. So if you call up, Call us up there or call up here and they will call Vrindavan. They will send you a taxi. Oh, okay. You have to pay, but taxi will come and that will be 100% safe. Yeah. But if you take a taxi in the airport or some taxi malas are there, they may be Muslim and they may take you somewhere else. So if you take government, what do you call, office, like Mukunda, once we, we took a taxi, that was authorized, but they charge four times. Yeah. You pay $100 to go there, but they will charge you $400 because government takes some cut, you know, like that. Yeah. So, depends how you, but take authorized, authentic taxi. Either it's government, you get a receipt, a receipt you keep, you don't give it to the driver. 
you give to the driver when you get out of the taxi in the ashram. Or you take a taxi which we will send from Vrindavan, because it's not our taxis, not our people, but at least they respect us and they are not a person who will take you to Timbuktu <laughs> instead right. of going into Vrindavan, you know. So they're yeah. trusted by you, trusted. Yeah, yeah. because you know, they know us. Right. We abuse their service all the time. They are send the right kind of person who will not smoke a cigarette for you, who will not be smelling bad or what not. Good drivers? Good drivers are Indian. Taxi drivers are better than normal drivers, I think, even in this country. Yeah. Taxi drivers are Because we drove from Calcutta, Kolkata to Mayapur, pretty crazy drive. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a communist state. state. There are two states in India which are communists. Communists, really? Yes, total communists. They don't respect you. Those oh, they are communists, so they are not improved. One is Bengal, another down south in the bottom called Kerala. There are two states in India which are communists. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh. Wow. Sixty percent Muslims and Christians, and thirty percent Hindus and ten percent Christians. Like that, there are more Muslims there. Really? So the yeah, uh, suckle and hammer, you know, that is the slogan there. Oh, wow. Two states. Gone oh. out of the hand for a long time, since a long time, and no government, nobody can change them back. Very difficult because the majority of votes nowadays, so there are more votes of Muslims, and then there are some Christians, and Hindus, Hindus are less. So there is a problem to change the government. When government changes, it will still take time to change the mentality of the people. Yeah, right. Because so many years they've been tuned to communistic ways. Hmm. You might have been dealt roughly. Well, the, the road was crazy. Hmm. I mean, the, the traffic, you know, you want a car coming right at you and they just zig it the last minute. It was a very scary road. <laughs> yeah, that was listed as one of the most dangerous world, uh, roads in the world. Most dangerous state in the in India. Uh, most dangerous state. One of the it, most two states are there. In Kolkata. Yeah, Kolkata means Bengal. West Bengal is communist country. Really, I didn't know that. Wow, it's a communist state. Oh. Let, let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, she had mentioned that, uh, you know, Trivikram? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it true he sent someone to put their feet on your head? Yes. Oh, it is written in my mission. I read it. And I read, read it. it told him. I was sitting there and uh, it was 1 o'clock, I think. The temple was closed, 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, she came and because our devotees don't speak English. She was making a big sound I could hear from my room. The big sound I was upstairs. And uh, one devotee came in and said, some lady has come in. And I said, oh, it's a white lady, she said. And I said, oh, okay, bring her in. So, uh, like this, and he brought her. Because don't speak language. So, hand gas just brought her. She sat about 10, 15 feet away from me. Young lady must be 25 years old, young lady. She spoke. Close to the summer <laughs> <laughs> When you know Sanskrit, that is your language. Uh -huh. And when you hear like this, I said, oh, okay. Very good. You speak that? Who? How did you know Sanskrit? I asked. Well, I'm a disciple, I'm a devotee. I said, Who's your guru? And I said, Trivikram Bhami. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> I know Trivikram very well. I said, Yes. What do you do? I said, I collect for my guru. I said, Where do you collect money? I said, I collect in Hawaii, she said. Oh, okay. So tell me, how come you say that only Premins can become guru? 
Close to the summer. Ah, everybody is born Sudra and Kali Yuga. I'm telling me. I said, no, it's not like this. The word Sambhava means possibility. Everybody, possibly, everybody, or almost everybody is Sudra and Kali Yuga. That is the translation, suppose. Oh, see when, for sure. This happened within five, ten minutes, ten minutes. She must be there, maximum time. She ran from there, climbed up here, and put one foot on my head. <laughs> Did he catch me what happened? This is in India. This happened in Vrindavan. I am born and raised in Vrindavan. I'm from Vrindavan. Iskan is in Vrindavan. That is. <laughs> My two brahmachari, the brahmachari don't know what to do because they're not supposed to catch the lady. Brahmach there are two brahmachari sitting, my disciples. They brought him her to my room. Mm -hmm. Two brahmachari sitting there, they do not know what to do. And then one brahmachari didn't care about the rules and took her arm and pulled her down. Foot was there. And now, and then this brahmachari stood up and because she cannot be, she's a strong lady. And these are, you know, Indian brahmachari, small ones. Yeah. So, uh, she mouthful of spit on me. This spit it on me. <laughs> I just carried on laughing. What else I can do? I am mean, I'm also a swami. We are all three zebra and color. What to do? Yeah. So my devotee, took his hand and slapped Raska. So, this happened, this happened, this all. We don't make up anything. Any sound you hear from my mouth is substantiated by scriptures. What comes out from my mouth, that is my life, it is in practice. Mm -hmm. What pra I practice that I speak. What I speak is 100% substantiated. I don't speak anything which cannot be substantiated. Not anything. So that should be the life of Guru. Guru means straightforward. Mm -hmm. Not speaking roundabout. Where I heard roundabout first time in my life. First time in my life I heard roundabout was in Berkeley. It was 1978. So Hans Dutta asked me to cook broccoli sabji. You heard of sabji? Mm -hmm. Vegetable out of broccoli. I have never seen broccoli. So what is broccoli? So they showed me, they, they cut maybe 10 kilos of broccoli and some potatoes. So I never seen green cauliflower. In India we have white cauliflower. Uh -huh. So we never seen broccoli. So I made the sabji. One fellow who entered into wash pots, I think, one devotee white man entered into the kitchen and he had his jacket, he forgot to take out his jacket, down jacket, the cold season. He forgot to take out his jacket and uh, he started doing the service he wanted to do. The head cook, whoever was, he is also a white man, I forgot his name, he came and I'm cooking the subject. He said, if I were you, possibly I think I will remove the jacket, leave it outside the kitchen, and then enter. So I was wondering, if I were you, possibly I think, maybe I would remove my jacket. I said, what is this language? I was wondering, you can leave it, remove your jacket. You see, our upbringing is to be straightforward. That is the quality of devotee. Because we are background is like this. Hey, you remove your jacket, don't sit on the floor, something like that. Right. If I were you, 
I would not sit on the floor and you know, <laughs> and possibly I think. <laughs> so first time in my life I have heard this and I was wondering, oh you could scream directly, you know, remove your jacket. Yeah. Go out and remove jacket because I entered the first time in the kitchen in America. So I did not know that jacket is not allowed and this devotee is wearing jacket. I could have also asked before the he head of come and before him, but I did not know. So he went and removed his jacket. But, but I was wondering what is this language? Roundabout, that's political correctness. That is incorrect spiritual life. Yeah. Spiritual life means straightforward. Mm -hmm. And if I think you are a rascal, I instead of calling you a rascal, I would say, what is a gentleman? How to be a gentleman? And what are the benefits to be a gentleman? What is the outcome if you become a gentleman? What you will gain being a gentleman? Did you catch me? Mm -hmm. Possibly, I think, maybe, perhaps. And uh, if I were you, I would be this, I would like do this. So, yeah. so that is devotion, devotee means straightforward. Yeah. I, clean heart, clean heart. Yeah, there's nothing to hide. No, it is he's, what it is. he's pretty straightforward. He gets, a, he gets, you know, people mad at him a lot of times because he's, Tells him direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good man. Well. Do you have a program on Sunday in your temple? We had before. No, no more? Mm -hmm. No more, yes. Uh huh. Do you give classes or anything on Sunday? If there are dead people, I give class, no problem. This is also a class. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. It is. But if there are uh, invitations, I go. I mm -hmm. The Hindu temple, they invite me too. Yeah. Are you, are you uh, <clears throat> they say you chant 16 rounds. Do you chant 16 rounds? I mean, is that what you advise, the 16 rounds? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was Prabhupada, directly from Prabhupada, wasn't it? Bare minimum, one has to chant is 16 rounds. Mm -hmm. Because in four days it becomes 100,000. Mm -hmm. The goal is 100,000. It's supposed to chant 100,000 a day means 64 rounds. So 64 rounds we cannot chant. Therefore you must make up in four days. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. 16 rounds. Yeah. Not less. From the time we wake up, from the time we wake up till time to sleep, we can chant 16 rounds, or make up 16 rounds. Mm -hmm. Due to some circumstance, if there is some remaining, we make up next day or next time when we get opportunity and make it up. Say, for instance, if you are, if I am hospitalized and I am unable to chant there on my 16 rounds, then I make up when I get cured. Right. So that is circumstance. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Say like that, when you come from India to America, you lose a day. So you chant in the aeroplane two times, because you lose one day. So you make up for it. Yes, you make up for it. What about if you go the other way? No problem, you, you have extra round. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but you never, circumstance yeah. allows you to not be able to do the round, then you make it up. That is the rule we have. But never miss 16 rounds, that rule we have. Say, for instance, my devotee goes in the morning, sometimes his job demands to go in the morning. 
So he chanted uh, four rounds, five rounds, and call came from the job. He had to go. Now, Swamiji, oh, yeah, you keep your big bag in your vehicle and chant when you get time. So he chanted there. Mm -hmm. Not while driving, but when you get time. You got to chant. There is no way you can, because that's what the promise is made in front of our sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You chant. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Now, do you ever go to California? Yes, yes. I have friends there. Uh -huh. I come to. Because I, I saw an address in one of your books or something, Aptos? Well, that is, that is changed. Now is where I forget the name of the town. Uh-huh. Because they move from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a friend there. Uh-huh. Very nice. He was my secretary. Scott Nowells. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Where does he live? He, right now, is uh, where I forget near the name. Near San Francisco. Yeah, near San Francisco. I go there. Yeah. Well, what about it? How far away from San Francisco? We're up 150 miles. We're an hour from Sacramento. We're halfway between Sacramento and Lake Tahoe. We're in the mountains. Yeah. So you are in Northern California. Yes. <clears throat> How far from Sacramento? Hour. One hour. One hour. Yeah. And two hours from San Francisco. Yes. Two and a, yeah, about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Right. So you flew from Sacramento. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The, the day before. Your I think he lives in New Freedom. You what? New Freedom. Uh huh. New He's Freedom. That's where he lives. Yeah. New Freedom. Uh, he going to find that address. Yeah. When we. We flew out Wednesday when we got to the airport at 6 a.m. Actually, we got there at 5, didn't we? Um, mm -hmm. The flight was canceled. I thought, oh, you know, maybe Krishna's telling me <laughs> not to go. <laughs> and uh, But he got another flight, so we stayed at the airport until 1.50. Oh. And then we had to fly to Las Vegas, and then to Baltimore, so we got in here um, at uh, 2.49. Yeah, 2.49. Yeah. Oh, in the morning. No, 12.49. 12.49. 12.49, yeah. Long midnight. Day. Midnight. Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> Long day. It happened once with me, too. When I was going to California, Colorado, I forgot the name of the city. It happened there, and my flight got canceled. I'm from Baltimore, gone going to California. My flight was in Colorado. I forgot the name of the city, big city. Denver. Denver. Yeah. Denver. And uh, flight got canceled. It was 10, 15 years ago. Oh. And uh, I was, wow, oh, wow, my God. We waited, we waited, we waited at night time. Midnight, he got one flight. <laughs> it's all okay. Yeah. They, they arrange for you. Yeah, yeah, they do. Just here to work. Right. Well, any more questions? I'll go I'll, when we leave in the car. They'll all come to me. All my questions. <laughs> Could we possibly meet with you tomorrow? Yes, yes. Okay. In the real guru and non-real guru is that when you are near real guru you bring hundreds of questions and half of them are forgotten <laughs> now another half is without ask answered you instigate one question two questions and all your remaining half is already answered the other half are forgotten that is called association of real guru. How would you know you reached a real guru? You might have heard this from Sri Prabhupada too. The Prabhupada said that too. Mm -hmm. But he did not say this much in detail, but he said too. You go to near real guru, you, all your questions are answered. Half of them are forgotten, other half 
are answered just by instigating with one or two questions. All are answered. You don't need to ask anything. Because you go near the swan, swan will separate water from milk. You mix water with the milk and give it to swan, he will drink the milk and leave the water there. Mm -hmm. So that is a real guru. Fake guru, every day you have many questions. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I can see that. Had enough of us? <laughs> <laughs> See, devotee is never tired. What is tiredness? Well, he is in 24 hours in service of God. Yeah. We don't need to be tired. Yeah. But listeners can be tired. Right. But guru not supposed to be tired. Guru means he's 24 hours in service. My guru was old man, even then he was in the service, 24 hours a day. When he took rest, that is also service. Mm -hmm. So it's called guru service. Mukundi, is that some prasad? Oh. oh, he was pretty Im impressive, Prabhupada. Yeah. Everything I read about him and, and listening to other people talk about him, he seemed to me, you know, very, very sincere. That is pure devotion. The quality of pure devotion. Yeah. yeah. Akara ingatir kati. There are three ways to recognize the pure devotee. How he looks. Mm -hmm. How he behaves. And how he talks, presents. Being in Vrindavan, there are so many gurus there. Why should I end up with Prabhupada? My father is also good. Why should I end up with Prabhupada? I saw pure devotee. Mm -hmm. They are also pure. They are also pure. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense. Purity. Akara in the thing that the three ways to be mm -hmm. So your father was a householder? Yes. Yeah. And how many how many children? Four children. children. Four children? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you were raised with the with the Gita. That is our the way of life. Yeah. So many disciples see Now they all, maybe all dead, maybe some day maybe we don't know. But uh, we are born and raised like that. It's called Acharya's families, teachers, the gurus. Mm -hmm. His father was a big guru. Now when you lived in <coughs> the grass hut and um, was From first place. But, but well, it started with a B. What, uh, Baneshwar or wait? No, Bhuvaneshwar, no. I'm oh. talking Vrindavan. Vrindavan. When yeah. you first went, okay, there was a devotee that with, was with you. You stayed in the hut with him and. Uh, Anand Maharaj. And he did he break his leg? Yes. Yes, I read Anand that story. Is he still alive? No, he, uh, 1992, I think, he passed away. Oh, okay. In our land. We have a samadhi for him. Okay. He was my god uncle, he called Prabhupada's god brother. Okay. Well, when you, you were said in your books, um, there was only one other person that was, a, was it a true devotee or a true guru, but yeah. maybe I'll have to go. Have Out to of Prabhupada's godbrothers? Um, 
Was it? Was he Prabhupada's godbrother? The one with the sam samadhi. Yeah. Anand Maharaj, yes. Uh huh. Is he still alive? No, he passed away in 1992, I think. Okay. His samadhi is in our land. When you go there in Vrindavan, stay in our ashram, you will see samadhi. Okay. Uh -huh. Now that's the one I just yeah, asked you about. Tom, yes. Okay. All right. He fell in a ditch. Very nice devotee. We were living in the same hut. Mm -hmm. One day, a cold season it was, and somehow in the dark, he slipped and ran the traveler. Maybe God wanted me to suffer. Was that how he passed away, falling in the ditch? No, no, no. He broke, broke his, his leg. leg. Broke his leg. Okay. That was 1973, I think, or three. 1973. Right. He broke his leg. Now, they opened the temple. 1975. And they made him leave? Oh, yes. They threw his legs get out from here. Why is that? <laughs> That's their nature. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. From what temple was that? Vrindavan. Vrindavan temple. Oh. Is it his kind of temple? Yeah. Mm. He went and left in Goryama, his guru's place. Oh. Made my grand guru's place. Okay. And then when we had our place, because I would go and visit him, because we got acquaintance and living in the same heart. So I would go and visit him sometimes. When he got our place, he said, can I come here and play? Said, oh, welcome. Oh, yeah. Very nice. And he stayed in our place. Yeah. So he passed away in 1992. Right. <clears throat> okay, so that will be my next project, is getting to the Red Temple. <laughs> Red Stone Temple. Pro oh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disciple was Rupa Goswami. Uh -huh. He built original red temple. Mm -hmm. Red stone temple he built original. That was 450 years ago. It was built and then that temple was what do you call it? Broken. That's how old your temple is? No, our temple is only uh, 15 years ago. Oh. It took 10 years to build that temple. But yours is called a redstone temple? Also. Oh. Because it's a redstone. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, from a quarry in the area? Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Prabhupada wanted this kind of temple. There was Prabhupada's desire. For the red stone? Yes. He wanted a red stone temple. Oh. All the pictures that he's seen of you, my husband, you had the beard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he had the beard and long hair. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, is this the one you have? I have one at home. Which you can have, can have it? Yeah. Okay. You can have every book you want. You can have when you go there, uh, go go back, take a set of books. Is there a when when you have a a festival at your temple, is there uh, enough to accommodate everybody or do you, I mean like, do you have a big celebration there? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, very big, big celebration all the time. Uh, but uh, we have festivals. The Brijabhasis, they go back again in the evening to their homes. Oh. Uh, yeah. And uh, those who are coming from distance, we have enough place. We, we have, have enough about place. Eight, six, seven people 
and uh, if we need more rooms, we can go to neighbors. Our uh, many many ashrams are there. We have connections with them. Yeah, sixty to seventy rooms. Sixty rooms, I think. We have. Sixty rooms. Okay. Aren't you building? Are you building more? We want to build more. Yeah, we'll I thought I saw. Yeah. yeah. It, it's very nice. They got air conditioning too. There's really. Too. There are some air conditioning. Yeah. Showers warm and cold. You, but usually in around February, you don't need air conditioning. But yeah. uh, we have showers, uh, cold and hot. We got geysers, what you call those water heaters. You just push button and uh, one minute it will be hot water. Oh yeah, instant. You got yeah. instant okay. Then you have to turn it off, so. Well, uh, hot water on demand. Yeah, we got hot water. Oh, interesting. And western toilets too, for, for the western people. Yeah. Oh, interesting. You won't miss much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will have some experience, but Vrajabhasi experience. See, <coughs> Mayapur is hidden in Vrindavan. It's called hidden in Vrindavan. Hidden Vrindavan? Yes. Uh -huh. And this is a real Vrindavan. About Vrindavan, Bhagavatam talks, or Bhagavad Gita talks, is about this Vrindavan. Yeah. That Vrindavan, no Bhagavatam talks. It's a hidden Vrindavan. Incognito, dormant, sleeping Vrindavan. That my. So you are going to real Vrindavan. You will deal with Brijavasis, uh -huh. and the government there is not communist. It is capitalistic government, uh -huh. and they will deal with you different, like that. Did Did uh, Prabhupada want the uh, big temple to be built in Mayapur? Pra Prabhupada wanted Mayapur. He yeah. said he wanted he wanted a nice place there, yeah. and he had had now he what is the name Alfred Ford's Henry yeah. Ford's oh, yeah. grandson. Yeah, he, Dash. he wants yeah. to uh, build a very nice big place. There yeah. was never such a slogan till seventy eight seventy nine that Prabhupada wanted a big temple there, but. They are trying to use very nice. Yeah. Prabhupada's desire was to build a red stone temple in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan? Yes. That was Prabhupada's desire. That much I know. Yeah. But I never heard he wanted a huge temple in Mayapur. Never. I never heard that. He wanted a place in Mayapur. Yes. Yeah. And they have already a place. But they have money. You know, they got a person who can give you millions and millions of dollars. That's fine. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Things more, more, more devotees. Yes, yes. Very yeah. good. Nothing bad. No, I don't see that. I don't know how far they went, but uh, how far they went? You go, You went there five years ago. Um, no, years. I was there two years ago. Two years ago. Uh -huh. yeah. So how far they come up with the temple? Um, quite a bit. I think they're doing a lot of the inside now. <laughs> you know, um, the interior is being done. Oh really? Exterior yeah. is done? Yeah. Well, how far? How high? What height is it? It's it's high. <laughs> it's really high. <laughs> yeah. If she has any pictures, she might have some pictures. Well, I just if I go on. What is it? Mayapur Temple. Mayapur Temple, which is really big. It's well, the wonder building in Vrindavan is the skyscraper, right? Yeah. That is different. Bangalore is gone. Oh, oh, that's Bangalore is gone building it. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought that. One multi-millionaire from Silicon Valley What do you call it? Sponsored a temple, 60 stories, 600 feet high. Really? In Vrindavan. Is he a devotee of, uh, of anybody or is it uh, independent uh, of any sect? It is ISKCON, but it's not ISKCON. Oh, really? It is called ISKCON Bangalore, South India. And uh, uh, Infosys, the company called Infosys, 
Oh yeah, yeah. The owner of Infosys. Yeah. And he is sponsoring the temple in Vrindavan. But he's not a part of this kind. He's not Iskon, yes. Interesting. Wow. It is called Iskon Bangalore. So is it a, a break off from Iskon? It's separate from Iskon. He a break off from Iskon. But one time was it part of Iskon? Yes. So there's even more yeah. factions within. That's, yes. Mm -hmm. That's how much of it is built already. Yes. Oh, the planetarium. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's huge. That's the planetarium. Yeah. Is that spot? Is then that being sponsored oh, by? Uh, yeah, Alfred Ford. Alfred Ford. Yes, Amberish. Amberish. Yes. Swamiji knew Amberish. Did he? Amberish would come to talk, get information, so advice. He wanted a, he came to my room in Miami and he wanted a name for his daughter. Oh. He wanted a baby who was, he was born, she was born, <coughs> and he, a baby got a baby, he wanted a name for his baby, he came to me. Uh -huh. Alfred Ford, Amarish Das, my godfather. It's very, very nice. He's the one that turned the. Uh, this thing. is Prabhupada Samadhi, looks like. There is Samadhi. That's a Samadhi, yeah. But, yeah. That's, but that other one was the, with the blue. This small one is Samadhi, and the yeah. big one is Temple. But Samadhi is, this is, looks like, Dom looks mm -hmm. like Samadhi. Yeah. Prabhupada is inside. Right. Oh, that's where the planetarium is? Yeah. Looks like the Vatican almost. That's pretty yeah, big. It's like a Vatican type building. Yeah. That's the Samadhi. I see. It does say, this one does say Samadhi, but this one is the big planetarium. Now that, that's in the process of being built right there. Mm -hmm. It's not yet built. Completed. No, it's not completed. It won't be completed. This is Samadhi, the blue one. And this is the temple. Oh, okay. All right. It won't be completed until 2022. Oh, the planetarium? Yeah. So they're... They're for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let us serve Krishna and go back to Gaia. Yeah. Let us serve Krishna and go back to Gaia. It's the only way to make a human life or human existence, a successful existence. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to God. The remedy to go back to Godhead is acceptance and absorbance of spiritual life. Right. So how do we all get in this bad dilemma? Because of our <clears throat> we are responsible for our existence in this world. Mm -hmm. Nobody is responsible. I am responsible for punishment or freedom in this world. Just like a person eating food person who is eating food and while eating and bit his tongue, bit his tongue. When he bit tongue, who he has to accuse? He bit the tongue, his tongue and he's feeling pain and he's getting angry with somebody else's injustice, not fair. Similarly, what karma we did in our past life that's what we are reaping in this life. Mm -hmm. Joy and sorrow are interwoven, Shakespeare said. So if they are together, why we are going through? Because of our karma. We have done something good, so joy is there. We have done bad, the pain is there. So problems are there. So to get rid of this, we have to take to spiritual. Spiritual life destroys all karma. Karmani nirdahati kintu cha bhakti bhajam. 
all karmas are destroyed of a devotee. Once you become a real devotee, your karma is destroyed. How to become a real devotee? You have to learn from a real devotee. A real devotee will command you, will not demand. Devotee does not demand. Mm -hmm. Devotee means a real devotee. He will command you. And that way you become a real devotee and go to God. So it's like that. Mm -hmm. So this cycle of karma ends only through spiritual life. Only through spiritual life. Yeah. So you have to be committed and dedicated mm -hmm. to, the, to the process. Dedication does not mean you leave your family, you leave your husband, you leave your wife, you leave your kids or leave anything. Dedication means just following, adding something to your life. Mm -hmm. That is called dedication. Adding, I'm going to become a real devotee. Yeah. That conviction will make you a real devotee. So you can be, as the saying goes, in the world but not of the world. Mm -hmm. Right? By being, yeah, you don't have to consider the live cave. Like, live like a lotus in the water. Mm -hmm. Lotus cannot exist without water, but it never touched by water, never affected by water. It's dry. When you pick a lotus, it's totally dry. When it's deep in the water, it's still dry. So devotee is like a lotus living in the water of this material world. Mm. And he has to accept everything. She has to accept everything, but not affected by it, not touched. Mm -hmm. No attachment. Is the lotus really dry? Yes. Take yeah. like a lotus, it will totally dry. Yeah. If it's raining, full rain, and you pick up a lotus, it's dry. Oh. Because Devotee is always dry, means not affected yeah. by lust, anger, greed, and avarice. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That is called devotee. Yeah. We have not introduced ourselves except I have just found out to be an actor in this movies. <laughs> Well, this is Rick. Rick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. I'm Judy. Judy. Yeah, I, I, uh, my spiritual name is Yashoda Rani. Yashoda Rani. Uh -huh. Judy. Mm -hmm. Judy. Jagadish. Jagadish Das. No, Mukunda. And what is yours? Mukunda. Mukunda. Mukunda is Krishna's Mukunda. name. Oh, okay. yes. Mukunda. So did you give them a spiritual name? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He's initiated over 30 years. 30 now. years? 30 with, years. with Maharaj here, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. And he's, I think, how many years? Two, three years? Mm -hmm. Seven, seven. Um, four years. Four years. Four years. Uh -huh. Went to his house. Father uh, is a professor. He arranged a program in the campus. Oh, really? Oh, two times, I think. Two times, three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. oh. Three times I've been there. A lot of people came. Okay. Interesting people. Wow. Professors and things. Yeah. It's a, a lot of us reported. <clears throat> a lot of discussion, a lot of questions, nice um, discussion. Uh -huh. <clears throat> once he was there, once he was not there. Uh, so you said your father was a political? Political science professor, yes. Professor. And his mother was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yeah. he Spanish had, and French teacher. He had a really open mind uh, to this philosophy there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's um, he's uh, been a agnostic for for his life, and um, he never believed or said he believed in the soul or anything. Uh -huh. But he came and he saw Swamiji, and after talking to Swamiji for a couple of hours, um, I talked to him on the way home, and um, he said uh, he said he was convinced that there is such a thing as a soul, after talking to Swamiji. Oh. We had discussed at least 30 professors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all of them went convinced. 
They all went convinced? Uh, there is no other way because they are uh, different standards of questions coming from them. Mm -hmm. And a different standard of answers to them. And a few hours of discussion, many professors came to his house. His house. And professor was brought here too. Mm -hmm. One was from Chicago yes. or somewhere. We have a recording of that on the website. Mm -hmm. So, so did it spark their intellectual curiosity to pursue yes, yes. it more? Well, they didn't become devotees, but they were con they were convinced. I mean, I think what it is is well, I don't know, but it seems like um, you when you're you. when these people are in the presence of guru, they realize and they realize for that moment how important it is. Then, since they're not fortunate enough, they leave Guru's association and they lose that realization that they had when they were in the presence. The really fortunate people, those are the ones who they become convinced enough that they follow. And there are many people like that that Swamiji is convinced. Mm -hmm. So they'll want to read a book, maybe yeah. the Bhagavad Gita or one of his other books? And he did and some then, editing work for me too. Oh, he did? Oh, yes. He did yeah. some editing work. Because yes. I find it interesting that a lot of times the more uh, educated sometimes people are, there's the more resistance sometimes to spiritual life because of uh, that uh, academic reasoning seems to take hold and can block out maybe the intuitive ability that an individual might have. Macintosh cannot accept IBM yeah. or work or software. See, yeah. Word, word it cannot be accepted. So same way, they're trained tuned in different way. A lot of hammering it requires. Yeah. A lot of work. That's why in my guru's preaching also, not many professors came. So it's very difficult to, up, you call it in your country, you cannot teach old dog new right, tricks. tricks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Right. But that does not mean they cannot be convinced. Because so far we have so much of discussion, so many problems. Many came in this house. Many, every day. I stayed in a few days. Many, I've been three, four times in there. So, uh, they come here too. They have this, unless they are convinced some ways why they have to drive all the way from there and come here a few times so have to be to come to Baltimore just for visiting, talking, discussing. Mm -hmm. So there is somewhere in the heart um, going on that, yes, this, what we were missing is uh, actually required, the dot is, was missed, now we can get it. Right. Something like that. Yeah, I can see that. One has to be lucky too. One has to be very fortunate to be involved in this, because goal of human existence is this. People don't know. Yeah. Well, that's why it's God's mercy. Mm -hmm. Right? Krishna's mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's like years, quite a few years ago, um, somebody had left a box of books in our shed, um, a, a friend of ours who, who, who uh, had a tendency towards spiritual life. Well, he left them in the shed and I was out there one day and I'm looking at this box and I see this book and, and it actually was the Bhagavad Gita, but I don't remember who wrote it. And I read it, and I thought, I really like that book, you know. And um, so I thought, you know, I got to find out more about it. And um, now this is when I met the devotees in the small town that we lived in. When I first met them, there was quite a few in Northern California. And I saw in the newspaper Bhagavad Gita class, and it was like. 30 minutes away, and I thought, oh, that's too far, I didn't, you know, and about three months later, I see that sign again in the newspaper, Bhagavad Gita class, happened to be the same place, you know, area, 
So I went and, um, and I started going to class and hearing about the Bhagavad Gita and, you know, so that's what kind of got me started on. How did you find us? How did I find you? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I, I told you that I um, read your Ecodicy book. You know, it, How did you get that one? Um, I have two of them, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I might have found it. Did you say you picked it up at a, and they at got a table? I picked it up at a the table of uh, books that, you know, people brought books sometimes to Rathiatra or Prabhupada Festival or whatever. To sell. Yeah, and I thought, oh, book on Ecodicy, you know, so I bought it, and I read it, and I liked it. So then yeah. I wanted to read more, and then I saw The Necklace Surrender, and I Those two books have been out a long time, too, this Ecodicy especially. Yeah, I've had it for a while. How long have you got? Over 30 years? <sighs> no, maybe not. Yeah, over 30 years. I wrote it in 81, no, 83, 1983 in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And editing and publishing was done in 84. Mm -hmm. So 84, 1984. Now, do you sell that book? We have, have yeah. Yeah. Is it the same one? Yes. Okay. So why did, how did it differ from what you were doing before that it sparked your interest? In no, I just, I liked uh, just reading the, all the different Akadasis and I just liked the way it was written and I thought, well, I have to find out, you know, I looked at the name, you know, Krishna Balaram Swami on it, and then I saw the Necklace of Surrender, and I oh my gosh, you know, so I bought the book, and um, then I said, I got to read more, and so I started, you know, I got, have gotten a couple of books, actually, most of your books, I think, that are in English, I have, except for the Bhagavad Gita's. I mean the Srimad Bhagavatams, yeah. The set. Yeah. The set is just next to you. Yeah. So did you... I'll have to order some because we're flying. Did you do <laughs> all the Bhagavatams as well? Yes, we did a set of Bhagavatams. Interpreted them from Sanskrit? No, where Prabhupada, yes, of course. Where Prabhupada left from there, we began. Because he did not complete it all. Okay, that's right. So I completed it. Oh, okay. So okay, so you didn't start with the first? No, it takes too many volumes. We uh -huh. cannot, we don't have that many editors and workers, like they were there when they uh -huh. available. But we don't have that much of funds, we are just beginners. We, we require funds for everything and nothing can be done without them. Right. So everything is short. So, which, now I have the set of, of uh, uh, can you bring that uh, box? Well, I just wondered where you started with. Where did you start? Ten. Ten. On 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. About so, where Prabhupada left off. Uh, Brahmas. Oh, I can't. I'll have to have you ship these to me because we're on the plane. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I do. The topics are written. What topics they talk about. Everything is written there in the bottom. Okay, so did you do different covers or the yeah, same covers? The same, all of them are the same. The same, all of no, them? No, design is different, color is same, all the covers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pictures are different. We, we have those, don't we? Well, we don't have... No, no. No. No, no, no whole set. Start with the box. So you have from 10... There are 15 volumes total. Okay. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take please. A long time we are talking. Oh, yeah. We have time for prasadam. Well, have a seat. <laughs>